called the Lion Whisperer by his fans, Kevin Richardson has an insight into predator behavior like no one else. I never forget that they are wild animals and something can switch in his brain and I can be a goner if you don't play your cards right. Now Kevin's bond with these carnivores is providing scientists with a unique opportunity. His animals are about to take part in a very special IQ test. How smart is a lion? Nobody's looked at this before. Lions and spotted hyenas are the apex predators of the African plains, rivals that compete for the same prey. Now their intelligence, learning skills, and hunting tactics are about to be seen in a new light. A series of remarkable experiments that will unravel the mysteries of their complex lives. I think we need to put them to the test and see what the results say. Okay, and don't let me down. Don't let me down. The Velhadoct Game Reserve in South Africa, home to 14 hyenas and 26 lions. And among them, one other unusual pride mate or clan member, depending on whom you're talking to. What I've always tried to get across to people is that this is not a lion, this is an individual, it's Vietzi, and this is Livy, and that's Ginny. And, you know, that's always what I've been trying to tell people. When you see these animals, don't look at them as just an animal, a creature um, that you've read in books about how they go out and hunt and kill. Uh, see them as individuals. And if you start to look at them in that way, uh, you'll, you'll start to see a whole new side of lions. Now their personalities are about to have the chance to shine through. Biologist Natalia Borrego has designed a series of tests to find out whether living in a social group may help make you smarter. Meet Natalia. Hello. Yeah. Part of this whole social intelligence hypothesis that we're researching is that social species are just generally intelligent, so you're going to be good at all these tests. But you need to be able to compare between species to see if there are differences and what those differences are. In the first trial, the lions are about to encounter something they would never see in the wild. Ready for the big reveal. The reveal. Don't get scared when you see your reflection. <laughs> <laughs> Expert mirror revealers. Beautiful. A mirror has been set up at right angles to a solid barrier, where a food reward will be hidden out of sight on one side. This is a giant mirror maze for lions. As you can see, there's mirrors on either side of this partition so that the only way to see something on, say, this side of the partition would be to look in this mirror. So we want to know, can they use the mirror to figure out, okay, I see, I see something I want in that mirror, but how do I get to it? It's a reflection. So I have to look in the mirror and then come around to over here. So let's see. The mirror maze is a trial originally developed to study intelligence in pigs. But can lions even recognize what a reflection is? Wild lions do encounter their own image when they drink, although they don't take any notice. With the scientist's healthy dose of skepticism, Natalia waits on the safe side of the fence. Here you go. Kevin brings in their first Who's test that? subject, Lioness Livy. Ooh. <laughs> cool. That's cool. Before the trial begins, Livy is given time to check Who's out the mirror. Girl? Yes, it's you, gorgeous. Look at me. Look. Ah! <laughs> two Kevins, that's an art, man. Imagine having two Kevins in this world. Hey, Livy. Come here. Come here, princess. Who's that gorgeous girl? I bet you haven't seen such a pretty line before. She's a pretty girl, eh? He's a pretty girl. <laughs> 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 
You not worried about the mirror, eh? Hey? You not worried about the mirror. I think you're gonna do just fine. Who's that? Many animals ignore their own image in a mirror and don't understand they are seeing a reflection of the world around them. The mirror maze in particular is a really challenging thing to do. It's, it's difficult. I mean, think of your, if you have a house cat or a dog, if you've ever shown them a mirror, it's just kind of, they don't get it, they don't react to it. Um, so to see if a lion not only reacts to the mirror, but can realize that it's not, it's not a threat, and then take it one step further and use it to get information about its environment and achieve a goal. I'm, it's how smart is a lion. <laughs> Good girl. She likes looking at herself in the mirror. <laughs> I'm so beautiful. With Livy enjoying the view, Kevin takes position on the other side of the barrier to give her a reference point. Look here. Look here. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So is she looking? Yeah, but she's more interested in herself at the moment. <laughs> Come. Oh. She watched you move in the mirror. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look here. Yeah, you see me? Look here. Look here. Look here. I yeah. think she's looking. Yeah, she's looking at me in the mirror. I think she is. She is too. Yeah. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they can do it. I really didn't have faith that they would, but... She's not stupid. Are you not a stupid girl? Are you a clever girl? The question is, does she understand that <laughs> it's a reflection of you? Oh. First, can they see a reflection in the mirror? Second, can they learn that that's not actually another lion? If they get past that stage, then can they use the mirror? Can they do this really challenging thing that is kind of a classic marker for intelligence? Livy is ready to start the test. Kevin, hidden out of sight, shows her a piece of meat in the mirror. Will Livy be able to figure out from the reflection how to get her paws on the treat? She spots the reflection of the meat, but heads behind the mirror to find it. Just like a toddler, understanding the concept of a reflection can take many months to learn through trial and error. Is she coming? She is looking in the mirror. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's surprising. Quite surprising. Yeah. Yeah. This time, you would hope that she sees me in the mirror and she sees me throw the meat, but she doesn't get up to go to the mirror. She immediately goes, oh, I know it's a reflection, I must go around. Yes. That would say something. It would. I mean, I still think we need to control for smell and... Me, me thinks scientists think too much. Well, that's the whole point. <laughs> in scientific trials, it's important to eliminate any variables that may affect the result, except the one you're testing for. The lions may be simply smelling where the meat is, instead of using the reflection. We have a box. This Perspex box will help to eliminate the odor of the meat and of Kevin. Can you see it if you look in the mesh? Mm, you can. So we need to move it back mm -hmm. and closer to the wall. <laughs> As close as you can. But will Ginny still be able to spot Kevin and find her treat? This Perspex box will help to eliminate the odor of any meat and of Kevin. Thank you very okay. much. <laughs> that is a conclusion. This okay. lion sees me in the box okay. and only I'm... reacts All right. when I flick okay. the meat. Am I right? Yes. What do you mean, yes? Natalia just refuses to believe. <laughs> Even if one animal can do something extraordinary, it doesn't mean the entire species can. 
Now Natalia needs to see how other lions cope. Livy's pride mate Ginny is next. Hey, girl. Ooh. The first of many headbutts that put the shatterproof mirrors to the test. Who's he? Yeah, look. She's definitely more tactile. Look at me, I just love myself. Have you never found a moment where you find yourself licking the mirror? <laughs> no, have you? It's never happened to you? <laughs> no, can't say that it has. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> These lions are still wild animals. Reading the subtleties of their body language during this kind of rough play is key to Kevin's relationship with them and to running the trials. <laughs> Enough playing around. It's time to do some work and test this brain. Can you give it 15 seconds in the box again before the meet? Your wish is my command. Thank you. Conclusive, that man. was perfect. Huh? That was perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. I... I'm going to rock my PhD. <laughs> it takes Ginny less than a minute to work it out. That was awesome. Cool. Now just do that four more times. Four more <laughs> times. Uh, you come sit in the box. But to make sure it wasn't just a lucky guess, Natalia will now run multiple trials with different lions to eliminate chance. So far, the results have exceeded her expectations. But the boys could be about to let their side down. Enter pride male, Vayetzi. <laughs> Faced with a potential competitor, Vayetzi is hardwired to react aggressively. This is an insane reaction. Right, no, he's just not clicking in. The other, the girls immediately ran into it. Oh, oh, no, wait, it's fine. Oh, look, there's me and there's Kevin. In the wild, male lions instinctively see other males from outside their pride as the enemy, for good reason. At around the age of three, young males are forced to leave the pride they're born into. They band together, forming nomadic coalitions until they're powerful enough to steal a pride of their own. Vayetzi just can't help himself. What's really interesting is the way they geared the males to protect. I mean, he's hunched down in like the aggressive posture that mm. they do. He's not relaxed. He's in fight mode. Yeah. While he's in the mood for a fight, Kevin backs off to give him some space. Look here. Hello. <laughs> but you are really funny, my boy. All brawn, no brain. You're letting the lines down, my friend. You are. All right, guys. We're going to go for one. Despite Vayetzi's preoccupation with his look-alike competitor, Kevin attempts to catch his attention. Yes, I'm starting to die in here. Yeah, he's, he's totally disinterested. Yes, did I? Whew. Vayetzi has shown that male lions are geared very differently than females. Look there, it's you <laughs> and me. But the lionesses passed the mirror maze puzzle with flying colors. 
contrary to expectations. The really interesting thing is the variation, the differences in the lions that we use. They really have their own personalities. Um, I was quite surprised by the mirror maze, I'll be honest. I didn't think they were going to do as well as they did, which is really exciting. Put, 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 put. Next up in the maze is hyena Vince. Vince, 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 Vince. Yeah. But will the hyenas leave the lions behind in their intellectual dust? Vince is the lowest ranking member of his clan, instantly recognizable by his missing ear and tail. Look at that. Me scratching you in the mirror. Hmm? You're admiring yourself. Is that the first time you've seen your ear? It's missing. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> it's true what they've been telling me. I've got no ear. <laughs> when he was just a day old, Vince lost his ear and tail in a fight with his brother. But you can't judge a guy by his looks alone. Before the trial begins, Vince is going to be taught to retrieve meat from a pail. These will be used in the mirror maze, taking Kevin out of the equation. Good job. <laughs> Dr. Christine Dre is a world expert on spotted hyena behavior. Use your head. She's curious to see how they handle the mirror maze. For Vince, the pressure is on. I'm flabbergasted. It's not often that I'm short of words, but this is a, probably one of those times. I mean, he's figured that out, this out in less, less than five seconds. That was pretty clear. It's insane. <laughs> now for the big test. How will he compare to the lions? With Vince locked away, Kevin brings the pails into the maze without being seen. The only way Vince will be able to find them is by using the mirror. A fleeting glance is all it takes. He's seemingly even quicker at spotting his treat than the lions. Good boy, Vinci. Was he deliberate? He was very good. Kevin repeats the trial with other hyenas. They all show the same surprising ability to use the mirror to their advantage. Well, I've always known that they're pretty smart, but that's always been anecdotally. It's really nice to put them to the tests. Being able to use that reflection to recognize these pails, to go to those pails to get that food reward. I'm really impressed with these hyenas. We often see hyenas portrayed in, in a negative light as scavengers, as skulky, as cowards, and all of these sorts of human attributes that we tend to give animals. Um, and hyenas are certainly not deserving of those particular attributes. For those of us who have been studying them for a really long time, I don't think we're surprised by all of their abilities, but I think the general public might be surprised to, to learn how intelligent these animals are, how flexible they are, how good at problem solving they are, and how pro-social. The reaction to the mirror maze has surprised everyone. But another important aspect of social intelligence is the ability to learn through observation. In the wild, adult lions often present live prey to their cubs. Practice makes perfect when it comes to the hunt. But is this learning? Is there social learning in lions? There's 
a lot of indications just from behavioral observations that sure, it would make sense for them to learn how to hunt from their mothers or learn where water might be in a drought, but nobody's ever investigated this before. And the easiest way to do this is with a demonstrator box. Basically, there's two ways that the lion can get the food reward. It's a piece of meat inside. Either they can come here and open this yellow drawer and the meat, the meat will be at the back. Alternatively, the other way into the box is the store over here. One lion, the demonstrator, will be trained to open the box by one method before its pride mates are let out. But will they then all adopt the same method or attempt the other option? If they pay attention, you'll expect all of them to open it the way that they learned. If there isn't social learning, then you'd expect maybe some of them to open it the way that they learned and maybe some of them to investigate and figure it out the other way. Kevin allocates one pride, the yellow drawer method. First up to be taught as the demonstrator, Ginny. That's a good girl. That's it. That's a smart girl. Oh, you're a smart girl, hey? She's catching on quickly. Good girl, eh? Safely behind bars, Natalia is so far quietly impressed. Kevin's job as teacher is now over. But will this new knowledge spread through the rest of the pride? Ginny's pride mate, Livy, joins her to watch what her sister is doing. So we want Olivia to see her eating it. Okay, good. Eat your piece, eat your piece. Good, get it, get it. Perfect. That's perfect. Good. Excellent. Okay. Good girls. If there is social learning, Livy should open the box using the same yellow drawer method she watched her sister tackle. Here, girl. So she's coming from the Perfect. opposite side. The red door on the other side acts as a control, giving Livy another option. That was, that was that was great. Awesome. I mean, she went. She totally bypassed the other solution. She knew where she was going. Yeah. Well done, my sweetie. Livy watched Jenny solve the box. Then we brought Livy back out without Jenny, and she solved the box on her own in the same way that she had seen it solved. And she's done that multiple times. So far, it looks like these lions are learning from watching each other. But can Livy now teach Pride male Vietzi? I got my pretty easy. To make sure they are learning from each other and not just the location of the meat, Kevin and Natalia turn the box around. Let's pick it down. Livy comes back in, closely followed by Vietzi. That's not good. That's not good, nope. Where's the drawer? She's looking for the drawer. Yeah. Instead of going back to the yellow drawer, Livy has gone back to the location where it was before. It seems as if the presence of a male is putting her under pressure, and it's overriding her ability to show Vietzi how to find the treat. Oh, he's opening the drawer. But it looks like Vietzi doesn't need Livy's help anyway. He's figuring out the yellow drawer all by himself. Here, he's opening it, he's opening it. <laughs> Oh, there we go. He's open. Oh, he found it. He found it. <laughs> she definitely didn't teach him. He taught himself. He taught himself. <laughs> the trial suggests that lions may not go as far as copying specific problem-solving behaviors as previously suggested. Nice. Perhaps it's they don't amazing. need to. I suppose the real question would be, would, why would lions need to learn by imitating each other? Do they really have a need? Right, no, it might just be my friend is over at that buffalo, so I'm gonna go over there and help with that buffalo. I don't need to imitate exactly what you're doing to get it down, right. let's just get it down and get eating. Right. Lion society seems to be more about cooperation than learning. It might be enough if you just have a big group of lions all tackling one problem together at the same time is sufficient for them to take down the buffalo or defend their territory or open a cooperative puzzle box. They don't need to pay attention to what the other lion's doing to solve the problem. <laughs> Hyena society is very different. 
arguably more complicated. Life for a hyena is governed by hierarchy. They greet each other with a ritualized ceremony to maintain social bonds. A mixture of body language, sound, and smell is used to signal rank between clanmates. But how will the hyenas compare to their savanna rivals on the social learning front? Kevin preps the demonstrator box for the hyena clan. Dr. Christine Dre will watch from her safety cage. Okay. With Tika's red door method perfected, it's time to introduce the next clan member. Happy to release Bongo Longo. Yeah, you show him who's boss. Come, Bongo. To get to the meat, dominant hyena Bongo must learn Tika's newly acquired skills. They first have to do their social graces. True. Just going to do our social greetings. <laughs> <laughs> social graces over, Tika heads straight for the red door, Bongo. watched by Bongo. Are you paying attention? <laughs> do you think that's enough? That was kind of a scary demonstration. Do you think one more? Maybe one more. Bongo watches Tika open the box again. That was a good one. But has he learned anything? Yeah, 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 yeah. This time, Kevin takes Tika away, leaving Bongo with the box. Bongo, yeah. Uh, You'll come back for it. Good stuff, eh? Learning. Hyenas rock. They do. They do rock. <laughs> Sometimes they roll. <laughs> to make sure it is indeed social learning and not just a preference for the red door, Kevin teaches next in line, Agip, how to open the yellow drawer. Good boy. Good boy. Now, will he pass on his skills to Luke? He hasn't seen the box yet. He watches Ajip intently. Then immediately gives it a go himself. Luke was having a go at pulling. We're trying. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well done, Luke. Variations aside, this experiment seems to reveal that hyenas can easily pass on knowledge by watching each other. <laughs> He's doing handstands. He's doing handstands. There we go, there we go, there we go. Luke's acrobatics finally pay off and he's rewarded with a new toy. Attending to what another hyena is doing in the wild is key to their survival because it's involved in paying attention to how to hunt, how to be efficient, paying attention to the social dynamics. That's useful also in clan warfare to be able to count on your buddies to defend you in a time of need. The destruction of the demonstrator box! Yay! Baba <laughs> demonstrator box. <laughs> Doors man. <laughs> Living in a social group requires more than just smart individuals. You need to be able to communicate complex ideas, and smell is a very important calling card. Lions use urine to scent mark their territory. In Vietzi's enclosure, Kevin wants to know how he will react to the smell of a strange rival male lion. He's using a urine-soaked cloth to find out. For Vietzi, 
an intoxicating blend of information. It can reveal the sex of an animal and even whether a female is ready to mate. For hyenas, exploring scent is also a fast-track way to sort friend from foe. They use it for all aspects of their life, for, for finding food, uh, for locating lions, so a threat could also be located through scent, uh, as well as for negotiating all of their daily social interactions. The hello, how are you uh, world of hyenas is very much governed through scent. Through her research, Christine discovered that pungent scents can even be used as a surefire way to make new friends and the stinkier, the better. By rolling in an unusual or rotten smell, low-ranking hyenas can briefly raise their status in the clan, possibly because a new smell makes them more interesting. But smell plays a much more significant role than just a perfume to impress. Spotted hyenas use their urine, feces, and glands between their toes to scent mark their territory. But perhaps the most important way they leave their calling card is by pasting. So hyenas have an anal pouch from which they produce a sort of thick paste and they will extrude that during scent marking um, where they just sort of straddle a blade of grass of just the right height and walk over it, depositing their own scent. Now Christine is about to try an experiment to see just how much information is stored in that tiny chemical signature. There are two hyena clans at the sanctuary, kept in separate enclosures they've never met before. This is Gina the dominant female of her clan. Her family includes a younger female, Woody, and a male called Monty. I'm actually collecting paste samples. What we're gonna be using them for is to conduct a whole bunch of experiments on whether hyenas can recognize uh, clan members from their paste, and also we'll include some unfamiliar individuals from other clans and see their reaction to paste from another individual that they don't know. When animals paste in the environment, it's not just about, this is my territory, stay away. It's also telling anyone who encounters that odor who's been there, when they've been there, who they are, and something about them. But what other information might be locked in the pasting? Matriarch female Gina and her subordinate clan member Woody donate their scent. You do Gina, I'll do Woody. So this is two unfamiliar females to a male, and uh, one is, the one I have is subordinate. And, and the one I have is dominant. Christine wants to see, can a hyena smell dominance? If they can tell dominant status, we should expect to see them show a preference for one over the other. I've chosen Tika as the, the male uh, candidate. Okay, I want you to start from here, bud. You see here? Tika lives in another clan and has never met females Gina or Woody before. First, he sniffs Gina, the dominant clan member on the right, then heads to Woody, the subordinate on the left. There was two minutes 40 at the subordinate and 33 seconds at the dominant. Clearly Woody's a catch. Woody's a catch. <laughs> Surprisingly, Tika is doing the opposite of what they predicted. Matchmaking is foremost on this hyena's mind, not rank. 
and he's more interested in lower ranking Woody. He's got a big smile on his face. He's this Those girls are sexy, sexy lady in town. She is. <laughs> and he's going back. Go back for some more. Ooh. He really, really likes it. He does. Tika is ignoring dominant Gina, who has a cub and is off the menu. Instead, he seems enamored by Woody, who is young, free, and single. It's made his day. <laughs> Absolutely, it's made his day. He's horny. <laughs> the end. <laughs> is that, I'm sorry, is that not scientific? <laughs> I mean, if you consider the age, um, Gina is now approaching 15. She's had several litters throughout her life. She's always been uh, the dominant female in the group, in the clan. Whereas Woody is a, a five-year-old in her prom. <laughs> He's like pasting over everything now. But a five-year-old in her prime is, is definitely worth exploring um, over an old granny, <laughs> so to speak. He's gone back to Gina. Yes. Oh, hey, yeah. I'll also roll in the old bag. <laughs> <laughs> Just one roll. One aspect of these social carnivores' lives may even involve mathematics. But getting your sums wrong can be fatal. Living in a group means you need to feed many mouths. This final experiment will test the strategy behind what a lion is perhaps most famous for, hunting. How do lions hunt? How do they choose their prey? Do they categorize? Do they base their decisions on how many individuals are with them? What is going on in a lion hunting party? Now, Natalia is using some unusual props to find out. Something that has never been attempted before. Here, there might work, yeah. yeah. But how are the lions going to react to the new menu? Should we put some grass here for him to eat? <laughs> In case he gets hungry while yeah, he's there. waiting to be eaten by the lion? There we go. Okay. It'll make it more convincing for the lion. Okay. Will they even recognize the cutouts as prey? For a pride, it makes sense to work together to hunt as large an animal as possible. But it's more dangerous to take down something big. A blow from a buffalo can kill a lion. So the idea is if you're a single lion hunting, then you're gonna wanna go for the easy prey because there's just one of you. So you might choose say the warthog or the impala. Whereas if you have a partner with you, then you can probably capture something more difficult. First to face the cutouts is Lioness Meg. But what will she make of the two-dimensional menu? As predicted, Meg chose the smallest and easiest animal. You must be pleased with that. That was amazing. Yeah, sure. yeah. Did you see her? So she checked him when you were a little ways off. Yeah. You saw her head come up and she kind of, oh, what's, what are but those? But she went, she went for the impala, which was yeah, what she I did. think you were hoping. Yeah, she yeah. went for one of the smaller ones, which is what we would expect to happen with yeah. just a single female. Next, Kevin releases Meg with pride mate Amy. If they're hunting together, they may choose a bigger animal.
They were absolutely amazing. Textbook hunting behavior with lions. <laughs> I was like, yes, I mean, cool. yeah. <laughs> so, And down. Yeah. <laughs> but together, they were in, in sync. sync. Yeah. And watching each other, the one would turn. But I mean, whether or not now, because there's two, they hunt bigger prey. It not really, seem but so. but the the thing for me is, is two lions. You know, they're still going to eat quite a bit of, mm. on an impala. So an maybe, impala's fair fair prize maybe for Maybe they two. don't need to take the risk. Why so, take the risk if you get enough yeah, with low risk? Absolutely. If there was five lions, I think it would be a different mm -hmm. story. Or maybe if there was a male. Male lions are one and a half times heavier than females. Bobcat and Gabby are taken into the test zone. Will his presence influence the prey they choose? So that was impressive. That was awesome. You can always trust Bobcat for a performance. Ah, for a real lion performance, yeah. Yes. And so. Gabby as well. What's interesting is, uh, is she immediately locked onto the buffalo, and I think, I mean, she, she knew she had backup. She had Bobcat there, and I mean, who wouldn't feel more confident with Bobcat? <laughs> so I think, um, to up the ante, one would want to now bring out three lions. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And perhaps a male as well. There's going to be a lot of meat there, so the risk might be worth it when you have kind of safety in numbers. Finally, three lions, Vietzi, Ginny, and Livy, head out on the hunt. With strength in numbers, the theory predicts they'll target the biggest prey. They lock onto the buffalo. But then the wind changes, and the buffalo disappears. So the trio simply set their sights on something else. They all went for the they Impala. They all went for the Impala. <laughs> Because it's the tastiest meat out there. I guess. Have you ever had impala? It's really tasty. Is it? Yeah. Despite taking down the impala, Vietzi and the females did choose the buffalo first. But Vietzi isn't quite finished exploring all the potential prey options. Kevin. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> Move your fingers. It's all about risk versus reward. The lions are choosing prey exactly as scientists have predicted, but haven't been able to test until now. Starting this, I didn't even know if the cutouts would work. Would they recognize two-dimensional objects as prey species? And clearly they do. It's been some really amazing um, behavior that we've been observing that I did not think we would get, honestly. I didn't know what to expect, that I didn't expect it to go this well. It gives us a way to actually test that now. So we can do this with lots of male-female pairs and finally see, OK, if you're with a male, how does your behavior change versus with, if you're just with a female partner? Time for the hyenas to make an entry and choose from the menu. OK. <laughs> hyenas are expert hunters. They can sprint at 60 kilometers an hour and rely on speed and stamina to chase their victims to exhaustion. But there's no fooling these hyenas. Unlike the lions, they aren't taking the 2D bait. They're not going to be deceived by a bunch of cutouts. Well, if that wasn't poles apart from what the lion's behavior was yesterday, then I don't know. These hyenas just didn't react. Hey, what's this? What is this? Yeah, you're more interested in my shoes. Much more interested in my shoes. What is that? What is that? These trials have shed new light on lion and hyena behavior. The inside story behind their killer IQ. It's not about simply who is smarter. You know, this is a show about hyenas and lions, and, and people are naturally going to go, oh, who's more intelligent? Who's going to be the winner? For me, it was never about that. It's just about showing people that these two predatory species, who are both social, uh, who inhabit the same environment and compete, 
are very similar prey species. How do they adapt and how have they evolved to combat the pressures that they face on a day-to-day -day basis? <laughs> it's not about who's a winner. And I think we've achieved that and I think they've achieved that. So kudos to them. What these experiments have shown is that lions and hyenas may also have something in common with another social animal, humans, more than we might like to admit. Looking at social behavior and cognition in the social carnivores can give us clues as to how cognition and sociality evolves in other species and where the similarities lie and where the differences lie. Research that may even help us to decipher the origins of our own intelligence. Now these animals are actually contributing directly um, to research, and uh, that's, that's really fantastic. What I hope that people get from the series is really looking at these animals in a different light, not just as these apex killing machines, but as creatures, sentient beings that have personalities.